infant sudden infant death syndrome or SIDS is the unexplained death usually during sleep or a seeming of a seemingly healthy baby less than a year old. Now SIDS is sometimes known as crib death because the infants often die in their cribs. October is SIDS Awareness Month where healthcare givers join to encourage safe infant sleep and help raise awareness. We are now joined by Dr. Herlinde Kushowa via Zoom. A very good evening to you and welcome to the show. Thank you and yeah, thank you and good evening. Uh, doctor, for a brief understanding, what is SIDS and zoning into Namibia? What are the most common ways that cause SIDS? Uh, thank you. And uh, you have given quite a, a good definition. So SIDS stands for Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, which is an, a death of an infant uh, less than one year of age uh, who was seemingly well, which occurs which occurs, occurs uh, while the child is sleeping. And um, this has to be accompanied by a, a clinical exam that uh, does not explain the cause of death and also a rigorous um, post-mortem examination that also could not account for any natural cause of death, such as infection or homicide for that matter. Um, and in context of our Namibian population, um, worldwide um, seats represent in the Western world about, it's one of the highest cause of deaths for children under the age of uh, one year old, accounting for about 0 0.5 um, children um, in a 1,000 in the U.S. But uh, in Namibia, we don't have um, any data that can give us a statistic uh, of how many um, deaths do we experience per year or how many deaths uh, are accounted for this, let's say, in 1,000 children under the age of one. But in our population, similar to South Africa, we have, to South Africa, we have some studies that are done in South Africa that account for about 2.5 uh, per 1,000 children under the age of one. And also there are some studies that were done in Zambia that showed about 11%, which is quite a large number. But there are some um, uh, information that makes this information, uh, that makes this data very difficult to put in practice. Uh, number one, we have other um, competing higher cause of death in our population that is getting priority. Uh, and number two, um, this definition of seeds um, requires that um, the child was previously well and most of the studies uh, that were published it turns out that most of these children uh, that were included in these studies turn out to have extensive uh, signs of infections in the postmortem, so they would not qualify and then again um, in our setting we also don't have expertise of um, pediatrician pathologists um, as we can compare with um, uh, our Western world where the studies and definitions are coming from. But it's definitely, it's definitely, definitely a significant amount. Um, it's just lack of studies that we don't have in our population in the media. Dr. SIDS is said to be peak between two to four months. Why would that be and what are the warning signs that parents should look out for? Uh, yeah, thanks. I think to look at um, the, the starting with the last part of your question, looking at the warning signs um, uh, that pa parents would look out for, because for everyone who could hear that there's something called sudden infant death syndrome, that means a, a baby is in the cot bed, is sleeping, and everyone wakes up and the child is dead and there is no cause, and the child was previously well. It's First of all, very um, scary, very traumatizing. It's very difficult to reconcile with after having a baby and all the joy that comes with having a baby and then uh, in such a shocking moment, a baby to be taken like this. So um, the warning signs that we could um, look at, I think we should initially look at the, look at the risk factors. And then uh, with looking at risk factor, we can also look at who are at risk and what could be the warning signs. So looking at the risk factor, we can look at modifiable risk factors. These are risk factors that we can influence and then non-modifiable. So looking at the non-modifiable risk factors, um, SEEDS um, is um, definition of a child who is above one year old with a peak of 
two to four months. So 90% of these children, this death happened before six months of age. And why two to four months is 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 a peak? Uh, we are talking about a vulnerable, is a vulnerable infant, is a vulnerable stage of development where there is a transition of um, from uh, when the baby is born to um, the growing stage, if I can put it in that term. It's, it's such a vulnerable um, stage where the body goes through all this um, growth, and and that is quite a vulnerable stage that a lot of fact, a lot of factors can um, go wrong, and then that can be based on the precipitating risk factor. So about two to six months, that's when you have this growth that is happening and that's why it's such a vulnerable stage. You have your instability, what is called vasomotor instability that can happen at this point that can affect the baby's um, breathing, can happen, and then you have your specific um, anatomy of breathing of a infant. Um, we always say that the, a smaller child and a bigger child, they have such a great difference and that affect their breathing and that also affect how they present with their breathing problem. So at that age, that's where the peak of their vulnerability and that's why the risk is there. And if I can go back to the um, non-modifiable risk factors, we're talking about genetics. There are genetics that are studied that are talking about um, the abnormality of cardiac, um, or the heart conduction that are found in children who die as such a sudden death and other genetics that we could not influence. But um, other risk factors we couldn't influence is such as, influence is such as um, sex, uh, male sex. So male children are more affected. Um, then we talk about um, socioeconomical status of a, of a patient. So a more poor circumstances has a high risk of uh, SIDS. And then we talk about them generally at that age of between one, uh, between zero and one year, that vulnerable stage. Dr. When Martin, we go to the risk factor that we could um, modify, we, we start with the pregnancy. So we have a pregnant mother. So mostly children that are a mother who has um, high birth. So many children per woman that also constitute as a risk children that are not spaced out, that constitute also as a risk. And then what can influence that pregnancy to be even more risk, um, to, to increase the risk would be exposure to smoking and um, alcohol and drugs. And that is before the baby is born and after the baby is born, that significantly, born, that significantly increase the risk of SIDS. Doctor, yeah. in closing, uh, then, October yeah. is... In closing, October is Awareness Month. What is your message of awareness to the public? Um, the, my message in closing would be focusing on the awareness. So basically, like we say, in the media, we don't have so much data that are done on this topic. So I think there is a great uh, opportunity that uh, studies can be done to, although there are other um, conditions that are taking forefront, this is also an important uh, topic that we could also invest some time and some finances to study this. And then to increase the awareness such as this, um, just the general public to know about uh, that it's safer for children when they sleep on their back. And that campaign has reduced the risk um, in America in 1990s. And it has in, it, 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 it's, it's something that we should campaign for, that it's safer for children to sleep on their back, on their back. It's the safest, and that which we should advocate for. Thank you, Doctor. We will need to engage you at another stage because of time. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you for having me. It's Dr. Herlinda Kuchoa. October is uh, Awareness Month for Sudden Infant S Death Syndrome, and she was just explaining uh, that to us.